you want to take your Bibles out and turn to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew 21, starting at verse 28 through verse 32. In my Bible, the heading says, The Parable of the Two Sons. Matthew 21, beginning at verse 28. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. The tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. And that's what we'll read today. For most of my life, particularly in my high school and college years, I always thought that the church was a joke. That really there were good Christians out there and that there was a real God and that this Bible was God's actual word, but it seemed like whenever I came in contact with churches that there would be suddenly all of this politics, there would be these social totem poles, certain people would be important, some certain people wouldn't be, some things would be ignored. Um, it seemed like there were people who were out for themselves, and it just seemed like a joke. I didn't make profession of faith until I was 22 years old, because I sort of thought, this just doesn't seem like the kind of thing that God would want. It almost seems like a, a club for people who call themselves Christians rather than an actual group of people who want to follow Jesus Christ. And eventually, um, when being a pastor became kind of the road that God was leading me down, it kind of came down to, okay, I could sit here and gripe about it and point a finger and and, uh, put down the church, or I could maybe be, help be part of the solution. And so part of this is some things that I used to believe, some things that I used to think. And uh, we have a tendency to want to settle into routines and comfort zones. And I think that that tendency is, it's in all of us, I've known it in myself too, it makes us want to just be a club. And last week we talked about how you can't be a loner. You have to belong to a body of believers. And we tried our best to fix that, but that should be the only one that does it. So in uh, your outlines it says last week you can't be a loner, but must belong to a body of believers. So if you're filling out your outlines, belong to a body of believers. We can't just be on our own. There is a body of Christ. And if you cut off your finger, the finger, if unless it's reattached right away, it's it it just shrivels up and dies. It's not a part of the body anymore. We need to be a part of the body of Christ. We need other Christians. But you can go to the other extreme too. There's always this these extremes that we can go to. You can go to the other extreme and be what you might call a club Christian a club Christian, and I have a few characteristics of what a club Christian might be. Oh man, that's not even working either. It was working before. Anyways, the club Christian. A, going to church equals being a Christian. Going to church equals being a Christian. B, you're suspicious of new people at church. When I was younger, 
I would belong to, I belonged to and grew up in a church where I had tons of family, and I was born and baptized and raised there, and uh, the name Vreesman would be one of those names that everybody knew, and so I was kind of one of these, maybe you could call dynasty children. So I definitely belonged. And so it was really easy to, when I saw new people come into church, I'd be kind of like, who are you and what are you doing here? That would kind of be the just, I wouldn't think about it, it would just kind of be the gut reaction. What are you, who are you? What are you doing here? You, this, this isn't part of our club. Going to church means that you're a Christian. B, you're suspicious of new people at church. They're not bad people, you're just like, what are you doing here? C, you have brand loyalty to, say, either North Blendon or the Christian Reformed Church, the CRC, to the point where it doesn't matter whether North Blendon starts preaching things that are not true or the Christian Reformed Church starts believing things that aren't true, I'm just going to stay right here. To the point where what is true, it doesn't matter as much as belonging here. This, this building, this group of people, this name. We're attached to the names and the buildings more than we are to what's true. D, status quo is the bottom line. Status quo is the bottom line. All right, there we go. So if anything changes, again, going back to when I was younger, it would really weird me out if in the basement, when all of the kids would get together to sing before Sunday school, if the, the chairs were facing a different way. Yeah, we'd still sing all the songs and everything like that, but if, we were, if our chairs were facing a different way because maybe it worked out a little better for the people who were leading the singing, that would like weird me out. I wouldn't like that. It's just, this is different. This is not cool. And that gets in the way of what's really important. And E, outreach is difficult. Outreach is difficult. You have, you have your club, and you know everybody, and why do we need to have other people come in? I mean, we're doing all right just the way we are. I mean, if other people want to come in, that's fine, but, but they, they have to kind of earn their way up the totem pole and, and into respect and stuff like that. I, I used to think like that. Now, club Christians belong to the church, but they are too attracted to the structure. They're too attracted to the structure. They're attracted to the building, or the name, or maybe even the pastor, so that you'll just follow the pastor if he happens to go somewhere else, or if the pastor's preaching starts to go, Neh, and then somebody else comes in who's better next door, and they're vacant, so that could be a possibility, then, oh, we just go over here because sermons are better over there. Loner Christians, that we talked about last week, they don't fit in well, and they say good riddance. And that was, that was me for a while, when I was older. Loner Christians don't fit in well, and then they say good riddance. Who cares about the church? It's just a human institution with a bunch of people who are more human than godly. But club Christians fit in too well, and then their faith becomes what you might call institutionalized. So your faith is, well, I just made a profession of faith. What do you believe? Um, well, let me see. Uh, I'm, I've, I've got... Heidelberg Catechism, question and answer, one memorized. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give you that. It's not, doesn't come from here. It, it comes from out there. Verse 30, we have two sons here. And there's a father who goes to 
both sons and asks them both to go work in the vineyard. And then there's two responses. Look at verse 30. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. So the second son said, I will go, but didn't. I'll go, he said, but he didn't go. So when we're standing up and we're saying, let's say, the Apostles' Creed together, we're saying that we believe certain things. If you think about what we're saying, and instead of just you know, rattling it off from memory like I did when I was a kid, yada da 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 um, If you're listening to what you're saying, these are huge things. That there is a man named Jesus Christ, that he walked on this earth, that he was the Son of God, that he died on a cross to save us from our sin, that he rose from the dead, and that we believe that we can have that resurrection too. I mean, that just, that makes all of the stuff that we do every day, that, that makes that stuff all secondary. Like, this is, this is what life is really about. I mean, who, who cares what our church building looks like as long as we're worshiping the true Lord? You know, if, if half, half the people were to, to move away, I mean, that'd be, that'd be sad, but the important thing is that we get together and that we're worshiping the Lord together. So, for example, you can be a Republican or a Democrat, but never vote. You can check out books from the library, but never read them. You can be married. You can, be, you can stay married. But you might have a lousy marriage. You can say, I will go, and then not go. You can say, I am a Christian, but just be a Christian on Sunday mornings. This second son wants to look good, but he doesn't want to be good. He wants to look good. He wants to give dad a, a good response. So, son, go and work today in the vineyard. Oh, sure, I'll do that. I don't really feel like it, though, so I probably won't end up doing that. I'll probably get caught up and do some other things. And say, oh, I, I just forgot about it. Now, here's a question for just us. We can always look at the person next to us and ask these questions of them. But let's ask this question about us. How many church-going people look good, but their lives tell a different story? How many of us, we look good, we give that favorable response, but our lives tell a different story. So maybe we'll talk badly of people behind their back. Maybe we'll fly into a rage if something doesn't go our way. Maybe we'll never be generous more than 10% because I'm only required to give 10% and nothing more. And maybe we'll never crack a Bible outside of church. Maybe that's not that important. So that we, we look good because we go on Sunday mornings and stuff like that, and we will say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. Maybe we even pray before meals and stuff like that. But it's this kind of thing that gives the wrong impression about what church is really about. Here's something that I saw on Facebook just this week. Sometimes the nicest people you meet are covered in tattoos. Sometimes the most judgmental people you meet go to church on Sundays. And the reason why that one caught my eye is because I used to think that. I used to think that. In fact, there would have been one time where I might have even written something like that. Now, 
want to clarify something. Being nice doesn't mean you're a Christian. There's a lot of nice people who don't believe in God at all. And even Jesus, there were some times when he wasn't very nice to some people. So being nice doesn't mean you're a Christian. That's not what we're aiming for here. But this is the impression of church to a lot of people. And that's not right. Just last night, I didn't have time to put it on the screen or anything like that, but I just glanced at Twitter and looked at what was trending. Christian was trending last night. The main article at the top, why can't Christians be more Christian? And it wasn't from New York Times or Time Magazine or any of those other liberal rags. It was from Fox News. We don't give out the right impressions a lot of the time. In verse 29, look at the first son. It says, I will not, he answered, but later he changed his mind and went. So the first son, he says, I won't go. But then he does. When I was translating this, I was kind of fascinated to find that a, if you want to be more, a little more strict of the translation, he's, the son is actually saying, I don't want to go. And then later, being sorry, he went. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to take out all of the smoothing out, that's basically what he's saying. I don't want to go. But then later, he kind of felt bad about it and goes. Now, what's striking to me there is that the first son was being honest. And then he felt sorry about it. The second son wasn't being honest and didn't feel sorry at all. The first, second son didn't want to go either. Because obviously he didn't end up going. The first son was at least recognizing, you know what, I really don't want to go. And, and, and I'm, I'm not afraid to say that. God, I really don't want to go. There's sometimes when it's not easy to do the right thing. There's sometimes when it's not easy to follow Jesus. You know, especially things like to love your enemies, to pray for those who persecute you, to turn the other cheek, those kinds of things. I don't want to. That's why this is a hospital for sinners instead of a club for saints. Because deep down, we don't want to. And we need to be honest about that. We don't want to. We want to want to, but it's not in us to really do it. We need to somehow open ourselves up more to, Lord, what do you want? Please lead me. But another just something brief here. There's a lot of people that you know, who appear to reject God. You know, maybe they don't, they don't pray, they don't go to church, they don't profess any belief in God or anything like that. And so maybe they say, what's the point? Maybe they say the church is a bunch of hypocrites or just a club, that kind of a thing. But let me give you a little shred of hope here. Just because they say it today doesn't mean they'll say it forever. This first son says, I don't want to go. And later he changes his mind and goes. Then there's other ones who say, yeah, I will go. And then they don't. So if you know somebody and you're concerned about them, you're concerned about where they stand with God, remember this second son who says, I don't want to. But then, as time goes on, he does.
Look at the screen here with me. We just said the Apostles' Creed, and there's a line in there called the Holy Catholic Church. You know it's a small c, Catholic, because that means universal. It means there's a church of all times and all places. If you made the Catholic a capital C, then it would be the name of a particular church, i.e. the Roman Catholic Church. We don't believe in the Roman Catholic Church. We believe in the church of all believers of all times and places. What do you believe concerning the Holy Catholic Church? I believe that the Son of God, through His Spirit and Word, out of the entire human race, from the beginning of the world to its end, gathers, protects, and preserves for Himself a community chosen for eternal life and united in true faith. And of this community, I am and always will be a living member. It's God who works in us to draw us to himself. And when we recognize that, we will always be a member of that, even if there's some dips in the road. And if we're being honest, we don't want to. But God puts it in us to do so. So going back to the church, church is a great thing and it's crucial for spiritual growth, but it can be an idol. Church is a great thing. It's important to show up here. Even when I was in my most cynical days of church, I always felt drawn to go and worship God. Like there was something special about everybody gathering together because of God. And I felt like that, there was something important in that. And maybe everybody around me is hypocrites, but the whole world needs to praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I wanted to be a part of that. So the church is a great thing, and it's crucial for spiritual growth, but it can be an idol. And sometimes, sometimes what we look for is you know, what looks nice. Now this is a, this is a nice looking watering can, right? And we have a plant here that needs water. And God will say, um, the plants need watering. So this, this water can will be like, yeah, I'll do it. Look at me, I'm a watering can. I'm, I'm made to, to water the, the plants. Yeah, I'll do it, Right? But if there's no water in the watering can, then what good is it? You can be a nice watering can, look like you're doing what you're supposed to do, but if there's nothing inside, then what's it worth? But let's say Let's say you're just, you have this styrofoam cup here. Nothing, nothing special about this, but you have water in it. So go, go water the plants, God says. And maybe you're not all that, that spectacular or anything like that, but, but you have some water and you're going to water the plant. Which of the two watered the plant? This one. It doesn't matter what you look like. What matters is what's on the inside. It doesn't matter whether you belong to the, the, the plant watering club. What matters is if you have water to water the plant. So what's inside each one of us? Do we look good on the outside? Do we belong to the club of watering cans? Or are we just a styrofoam cup, but we have some water to give? Because people don't need a fancy building. They need fellow believers. When I was in Haiti and standing in buildings that could barely be called buildings at all, 
And there were these tons of believers that would be there every single day of the week. It kind of really hit me there. People don't need a building. They need a community of believers. They need other Christians to say, hey, how are you doing? You know, how's your, how's your marriage going? How's your family? You know, are, are you walking with God right now? I know that you said that you were struggling with this temptation. How, how's that going? We need that. And we don't need a big fancy welcome sign out there. People need to see Jesus' love in here. And out there, for that matter. We don't need a welcome sign. We need to actually have Jesus' love here. I've actually had people who have joined this church because they said, when I walked in here, I felt like people actually loved each other. Like people actually cared about one another. And, and I just wanted to be a part of that. That's what we want to hear. They'll, they'll know we are Christians, that we're for real by our love, that we actually care about each other. So let's never be more North Blendon than Christian. North Blendon, that can come and go. We're Christians. Let's never follow Christian Reformed more than we follow what God has said. Because those are just brands. It's the content that is what counts. In fact, let's be ready to change anything to serve God better. Let's be ready to change anything if it's going to serve God better. It's going to serve the true God. It's going to point people to Him in a real way that's authentic. Who cares if it's in a styrofoam cup or whether it's in a fancy watering can? The important thing is that there's water that gets water to the plant. And because this always strikes me, I tell you the truth, the tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. That, that kind of stands out in my mind. Here's the people who went to church every Sunday, followed all the laws and the rules, and they knew them backwards and forwards. And Jesus says to them, you know what? Tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. That should always give us pause. I hope it does you as it does me. And so, let's be ready. Be prepared to follow the example of sinners who respond to the Lord. Be prepared to follow the example of sinners. Because we might be a fancy watering can doing all of the right things, belonging to the right club, but there might be some people who have actual water. And we might be realizing, boy, I've been focusing way too much on just the external things. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we don't want to be an empty pitcher of water. We want to go out and do the work that you call us to do. Lord, even if we're honest with ourselves and we don't feel like doing it, please lead us to do it. Inspire us to do it by your Spirit. Lord, we pray that we would have the right hearts and that this church, this congregation, this body of believers would always be a people of you and you first and foremost. Help us not to get attached to status quos or structures or names. Help us to be concerned about what you want us to do where you want us to go, and what you want us to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.